Hi, my name is Nathan, and I am one of the developers working on the virtual NAS project for the VATSIM network. Today, I wanted to share with you the new TowerCab mode, as well as demonstrate how to construct TowerCab video maps using QGIS. I've loaded up CRC with a simple profile for Boston Tower that contains a single window in TowerCab mode. As you can see, TowerCab mode consists of two layers, the background and the airport diagram overlay. For the background, controllers can choose between using aerial imagery or a custom solid color. As I have done with mine, satellite imagery can be darkened to create a greater contrast between the airport diagram overlay and the background. The airport overlay is defined by facility engineers and consists of polygons and lines to help controllers better identify their airport's layout. As I pan around Boston, you can see that I have created an overlay that depicts runway markings, taxiway edges, and hold short bars. After some trial and error, I have found that these elements create a visually interesting map that is functional for controlling without appearing cluttered. Ultimately, it is up to an RTAX management and facility engineering team to determine what would best suit their airports. To see how these diagrams are constructed, let's open up QGIS. Instead of QGIS, we'll go to XYZ Tiles, right click, and add New Connection. Inside the New Connection window, give it a name and paste the URL that is found in the video description below. Click OK and now drag and drop this layer into our Layers panel. We can now see satellite imagery appear in the viewer. This satellite imagery comes from the same source that is being used for CRC, so polygons and lines that are aligned to this source will also be aligned in CRC. We'll now zoom into the airport that we're working on. For this example, this is Nashua, New Hampshire, just because it is simple. We'll go up to Layer, click Create Layer, and add a new temporary scratch layer. We'll give the layer a name for this, just Nashua Cab, and choose Polygons for the geometry type. We now need to add a color field, which is text of length 7, and a Z index field, which is an integer of length 1. Z index controls how polygons are stacked on top of each other. For example, two polygons that are overlaid will render such that the polygon with the higher Z index will be on top of the polygon with the lower Z index. We'll click OK and right click the layer, go to Properties, Style, Load Style, and select the Cab Polygon Style that is linked in the video description. After clicking Apply, go to the Attributes form and click the Color field. Ensure that the widget type is set to Color. And let's specify a default value of white. Type single quote, hashtag FF, 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 and another single quote to close the default value. Go to Z index and add a default value of 1. Click Apply, and then OK. We're now ready to start adding polygons. Ensure that the layer is in edit mode and there's a little pencil next to the icon. If there is not, click the toggle edit mode button on the toolbar. For the remainder of this video, I will be using my own keyboard shortcuts. Go to Keyboard Shortcuts, Load, and load the file that is linked in the description of this video if you want to use the same. We're now ready to begin drawing polygons. The first polygon we want to draw is the extent of the pavement across the entire airport. Press N to create a new polygon and left click to drop a point. We can then begin tracing out the entire polygon by clicking each corner point. If you make a mistake, you can simply press the delete key to remove the previous point. I'll now continue working my way around the edge of the entire Nashua airport. After placing the final point, right-click anywhere to complete the polygon. We'll now change the color from the default white to a custom gray that I like for pavement, 717171, though you can use whatever you prefer. 
We'll also change the Z index to zero so that pavement renders underneath other elements. Click OK and we can see the entire airport is now covered in pavement. However, this makes seeing the satellite imagery underneath a bit difficult, so let's change the opacity so we can draw more polygons. Right click, go to Properties, Symbology, Layer Rendering, and drop the opacity down to around 50%. Click Apply and OK, and we can now see the rest of the airport underneath the pavement. Our next step is going to be cutting out the areas of grass and buildings that are now obscured by the pavement polygon. To do this, press H for a new hole. And again, begin left-clicking points to trace out an area that we want to cut out of the pavement. After placing the last point, right-click to cut out the hole. I'll now continue cutting out similar holes around the Nashua Airport. As I reach this section of the airport, I realize I've made a mistake with the pavement polygon. These three hangars should not be cut out as holes, rather the pavement polygon should be formed around the hangars. To edit the pavement polygon, press V to enter vertex mode. In vertex mode, you can hover over and move any of the previous vertices that were placed to create the polygon. You can also hover over the center of a line segment and click the plus symbol to add a new vertex. Here I will click the plus symbol and create a new vertex on the corner of this hanger. This will change the pavement polygon to now trace around these hangers. With all the buildings and grass areas cut out, it's now time to begin tracing out the runway markings. Again, press N to create a new polygon and begin tracing along the edge of these runway edge lines. Right click to complete the polygon, keeping the color and Z index as the default white and one. We now need to cut out the center of the polygon so the polygon only forms the edge markings. However, we have two polygons now. One is the pavement, and the next is the white markings on the top. In order to specify which polygon to cut from, go to Edit, Select, Select Features, and click on the white runway markings. We now see that it's selected in yellow. Press H to begin cutting a new hole in the polygon. After tracing out the inside of the runway, right click to cut out the hole. We can see that the runway edge lines are now just on the edge of the runway. However, they are still selected and displaying in yellow. To deselect, go to Edit, Select, Select Features, and click outside of the feature. We'll now begin work on the runway center line. We'll find a center line and begin tracing out the rectangle. Right click to complete the polygon and keep the default properties. We can now go to Edit, Select, Select Features, and select the polygon. Press C to copy. Click the polygon, and the polygon will now snap to the cursor. This feature makes it very easy to duplicate polygons that are used numerous times, such as runway center lines. Simply click once to place the polygon. This will not only stamp the polygon, but also keep the polygon's properties such as the Z index and the color. I will now use this method to complete the rest of the runway markings, including the designation markings, threshold markings, touchdown zone markings, and aiming point markings. With the runway markings complete, we can check our work by going to the layer, right click, properties, layer rendering, and turn the opacity back up to 100. We can now see how our diagram will be rendered in CRC. It's now time to move on to the taxiway markings. Go to Layer, Create Layer, and a new temporary scratch layer. 
We can also name this layer Nashua Cab, but change the geometry to line string. We'll add the same color field, a text of length 7, the Z index field, an integer of length 1, and an additional thickness field, also an integer of length 1. Click OK and right click our new layer. Go to Properties, Style, Load Style, and load the Cab Lines style attached in the description below. Click Apply and go to the Attribute form. Verify that the color widget is set to Color and set a default value of hashtag FCB737. This is the color I like to use for the yellow of the taxiway markings. Go to Z index and set the default value to 1 and the thickness default value to 2. Click apply and then OK. Go back to our cab properties, go to symbology, layer rendering, and drop the opacity back down to 50%. We can also toggle off the editing and save the features that we've created on our polygon layer. We'll now begin with the runway hold short markings. Press N for a new line and left click for the two points. Right click to complete the line and press enter to accept the default properties in the window. Once all the runway hold short markings are complete, go to properties, attribute form, and change the thickness default value to one. We'll be using this thickness value for the rest of the taxiway lines. After adding the chevron at the end of the runway and some taxiway hold short lines, I now have to draw these dashed taxiway edge lines. Just like we did with the runway center line, create one, press C, and click on it to snap it to the cursor. I can now stamp out this taxiway edge line by left clicking. The taxiway edge line and its properties will be placed. With the taxiway markings complete, our airport diagram should be finished. Press P to enter pan mode. We can now pan around the airport to check for any missing features. To export the airport, right click on the polygon layer, go to export, save features as, verify the format is GeoJSON, and save to a new file. You can uncheck add save file to map and click OK. Repeat this process for the lines layer, going to export, save features as, and saving the file. The final step is to open both of these files and select the features from the lines file. Go to the polygon file, find the last element of the array, add a comma, and paste in the lines. We can now clean up the file, removing any extra lines, as well as some extra properties that are added by QGIS on the first two lines. However, this step is optional. Save the file and upload to the Data Admin website as a new video map. Back in CRC, I created a Nashua Tower profile and created a Tower Cab window. We can now see our video map, including all of the line segments and polygon features that we created in QGIS. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comment section below or through the CRC Discord.